tell us about the jet side or the quarantine side? um, Really, the only thing I'd like to say is that it is not as complicated as it seems when you first get here and you are so jet lagged and so tired and you just want to sleep. It's not that bad. Okay, so you can't go out to like the outside. I cannot escape. I am trapped. Mm. (laughs) Hello, dreamers. Today, I have a little bit of a different type of video for you. So if you're just joining, hajime mashite. My name is Adria. We are going to be interviewing someone who is currently in quarantine in Tokyo. So stay tuned for all the juicy details and the advice before your quarantine at the end of the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed the content. And please share this if you know anybody who's coming to Japan in the coming COVID-19 months. Let's start our interview. We are currently now joined by a friend of mine who is in quarantine in Tokyo. I will not disclose the actual location, but we're going to talk about all of the logistics and situation that they are in. So hello, how are you doing? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. (laughs) Your situation's a little tougher than mine, though. A little bit different. Um, not too terrible though. So, uh, what day of quarantine are you on right now? Um, <laughs> or have you four. totally lost track? Okay. I lost count on day two. <laughs> How is, uh, getting over jet lag in your hotel room? For me, it was actually really easy. Um, we landed in Tokyo about three o'clock in the afternoon. By the time we got through, you know, the COVID test and customs and the bus ride to the hotel, it was five or six we had a little meeting and then it was nine o'clock at night I went to sleep woke up at a normal time and I was still a little tired but the jet lag went away pretty quickly I was surprised without yeah. sunlight I was worried that it would be like hard to adjust to well there's a the window time. that's true that's true yeah <laughs> how's your hotel how are you adjusting to your four walls I mean it's a nice hotel. Um, it's nice. I have a little bit of extra room, a good views, but um, it's still a hotel room. Still going a little bit stir crazy, but overall, I mean, gonna ask for a better spot if I had to stay in a hotel room. And I'm sure that everybody wants to know, but how are the meals? How are the bentos? <laughs> they are a solid six out of 10, seven out of 10. Um, okay. They're all cold. Some people are getting really creative, finding ways to heat them up with the kettle in the room, or um, there is a microwave that's available at certain times, but not super convenient for meal time. Mm. But the food itself, I mean, it's good. It's good food. It's balanced. It's fairly healthy. Um, a lot of rice. There's one day they gave us little burger sliders, really trying to cater to the American. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, no complaints. Yeah, I haven't gotten the same meal twice yet. Nice. Um, well, we're only on day four, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> in terms of dietary restrictions for other people, do you think there's a lot to eat in the bentos if you were, for example, vegetarian? So this doesn't apply to me, um, but I believe the people that are vegan or have allergies, when the travel agency sent out an email, they should have been able to fill out a form um, stating those dietary needs. And I do know that um, people who are vegan and vegetarian are getting a special meal. Oh, good. So okay. they have separate options for you. Very nice. I will say that you are at one of the fancier hotels to be quarantining in, in Tokyo. It is the same one that the normal jet year usually spends three days in. In fact, it's the same hotel that I spent three days in, but I don't think you get to explore the hotel quite as much as I did. So tell us about when you're allowed to leave the room or what you're allowed to do. So once a day, you leave your room to get your temperature checked. And then there are specific hours that you can leave the room to go to a little store specifically for those of us quarantining and specific hours that you can go to the laundry machine. Also about the rooms, they are non-smoking rooms. However, I did confirm with my friend that there is a room designated if you need to go and smoke. However, it's only open for certain times. So that is something to note. Um, And use that. That's about the only reasons or only times you can leave the room. The time slots are based on your jet ID number. Um, And they'll give you a little sheet that explains exactly when and where you can go. So do you think you're the only people quarantining do you think the hotel is open for regular guests i only know of jets quarantining and in fact there's a jet information desk on the top floor so i'm guessing it's only jet i wonder if the like top half of the hotel is quarantine and the bottom is normal or something like that yeah it's a big hotel 
the um, elevator is actually locked so we can only go down so far um, oh we yeah can't to, we can't physically go to the lobby so actually the whole hotel might be very interesting okay so you can't go out to like the outside at all i cannot escape i am trapped mm. <laughs> so what kind of things are in the store that you're allowed to go to a lot of like um, prepackaged meals that you can use like the kettle in the room to heat up um, like ramen there's some snacks I got a little um, like a I don't know what it's called but like a bready matcha cake type thing it was good um, they have <laughs> coffee drinks they have tea drinks they have sodas they have some beer I didn't spend too long looking at that section because it's <laughs> not my thing um, but a good selection of snacks, um, ground coffee, tea bags, stuff like that, that you can make with the kettle in your room. You will not starve. <laughs> All right. Not bad. Did you bring any additional snacks with you because you knew you were quarantining? I did. I brought um, a couple Cliff bars and a couple Laura bars, things like that. Um, just wow. in case I got a meal that I just couldn't eat. <laughs> just in case. And I do recommend that. <laughs> yeah. So so you can only go to those stores during set times yes my time okay. for today is 7 to 11 i think tonight and i think it's every other day we're allowed so you can't really leave your room that often and how much does the laundry no. cost it is 500 yen so about five dollars and it takes two hours and does both the washing and the drying in one go and does it have soap in it yes it's um it dispenses it within the machine itself. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty common in Japan for the expensive machines. I think you told me a little bit earlier, you had some trouble with the toilet. Is that true? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I was warned that I would not be able to figure out how to flush the toilet from Japan. And I said, no, I got this. It cannot be that hard. It took me five to 10 minutes. It's, <laughs> oh, complete. The little flushing lever is completely separate from the toilet itself. Welcome to space toilets. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, but I'm loving it. It's very fancy. Can you control the temperature in your room? Yes. Yes. Okay. Tell us a little bit about the apps and the checking temperature, checking into the app process that you have to do every day. So I know things are changing a lot. Um, I knew mm -hmm. someone who was quarantining two weeks ago. Her experience was very different than mine. Okay. Just before I started, they dropped it from three apps we had to have to two. And oh. they we're no longer requiring us to stay in our room strictly for the first seven days. We can go out and get our temperature checked and stuff now. For me, currently, it's two apps, one of which tracks your location and lets you know if you come into contact with anyone that has been diagnosed with COVID-19. And it's completely anonymous. It doesn't give away who it was, but it does let you know. The other one um, is the more complicated one. It's called My SOS. Um, uh, yeah. Basically, it just makes you check in once a day saying, hey, I'm here, still in the hotel. Um, <laughs> once a day, you have to report your health condition, just saying that you don't have a fever, you don't have a cough, anything like that. And then the third thing is a video call, just proving that you are where you say you are. But the app tracks your location all the time. So if you miss the call, it's okay. They'll call back later. If you miss a little prompt to say, I'm here, I'm still in the hotel, it's okay. It's not an emergency. They'll ask again later. So the video call can come at any time of the day or is it like usually in the yeah. afternoon? It's random, um, but I haven't mm -hmm. gotten one late at night or early in the morning. It's usually been at least 10 a.m. or an earlier than probably five or six. So how's the Wi-Fi in the room? Overall, pretty good. Um, I, it has been a little spotty in the middle of the day when everyone in the hotel is online. Um, mm. But I haven't had a lot of issues. I think some of the others have. I've been able to do everything I needed to do. Uh, do you know if deliveries or anything are allowed to the hotel, such as your cell phone, SIM cards, or other things? Yes. So um, you can have deliveries made to the hotel, not food deliveries. You can't order Uber Eats okay. or anything like that. <laughs> but most of the people have had packages from Amazon or something like that come to the hotel. And I don't know about other mobile carriers, but Sakura Mobile is delivering all our SIM cards on the same day. And it's going to set up a desk um, for oh, wow. us to come pick them up. Oh, wow. That's really cool. <laughs> yeah, super easy. Yeah. Yeah. So if you guys have watched my other videos, I've talked about Sakura Mobile before. I would say that most foreigners, especially jet program people use this just because it's 
really easy, really convenient. It has English service hooked up to it so you can contact them. And it's pretty cheap. I think it's about 30, 35 bucks a month or about sans and gohyakuen about. Is that about what your contract is? Yeah, about that. Yeah. So the only thing I didn't ask was what happens if you do get a positive test? Do you know? I don't know. I don't think that actually happened to anyone um, okay. in our group. I'm pretty sure that you just get taken to a separate location to quarantine, potentially at a, mm-hmm. either a hospital or something like that. I don't actually know because I don't know of anyone that that happened to. Okay. Um, I will say you have to take multiple PCR tests during the quarantine. Um, they just lessened it. So for me, I had to take one yesterday and I have to take okay. one, I believe. All right. Oh, well, that's not so two or bad. three. Yeah. Well, you know, they're being cautious. That's the most we can ask for, right? <laughs> Oh yeah, no, seriously. All right, let's talk a little bit about some jet specific related stuff. So for you, before you actually left your country, did you get to meet the other jets that were going with you? Did you like meet at the airport? Did you sit together? That kind of thing. No, we pretty much met at the airport. Um, We had a group chat online of the people Mm -hmm. going from our consulate. Um, And there was a little bit of texting back and forth and helping each other out with different problems but as far as meeting we met at the airport waiting at the gate we did sit together or some of us sat together on the plane and then I mean then it was like a whirlwind of customs and quarantine and we've run into each other a little bit in the hallways and I think at the end of quarantine they are setting up like a little meet and greet with us I think one of the last days we can go in little groups to meet a few of our peers so that's nice okay it's probably only the people going to the same prefecture as you that would be my gut reaction but I don't know that yeah I'm not sure I actually think it's based on our jet number most of the group Uh, things we've had have been just chunks of group numbers or um jet numbers and you're all headed to different places you think yes yeah Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. very interesting what airport did you fly into and how long did the immigration and COVID process take? So we flew into Haneda airport and I was blown away by how fast it was. We landed about three o'clock. We went through the COVID testing process. They checked all our paperwork. It was very much, you stop at one desk, you check one paperwork, you stop at another desk, you check another. It was um, very systematic and very well organized. Then we took the COVID test. It was a spit test. Mm-hmm. and we had to wait in this little area for our results to come back they told us it would take two to four hours I was there for maybe 30 minutes wow um it was were so you fast. towards the front of the airplane no I was probably midway and it came back kind of sporadically it wasn't exactly like one two three four you know but yeah it was really quick once that happened we went through customs customs dragged a little bit as customs will I think I I was on a bus to the hotel at five o'clock. So it took all of two, two two and a half hours. I think my lunch just got delivered. Oh, nice. (laughs) You're welcome to go grab it if you want. (laughs) Oh, I'll grab it after this. Um, They knock on your door and ring your doorbell when the food comes. Nice. (laughs) Good thing to catch on video. Now we know. Okay. How are you communicating with the other people who came with you? You kind of mentioned it earlier. So we have a big line group chat. I'm not Mm -hmm. sure who started it or how, but someone started (laughs) one for the consulate, like game of telephone. Oh, you haven't heard about that. Let's add each other, that kind of thing. Um, And now there's like a hundred people in this group chat and I'll look down, there'll be 200 (laughs) notifications after an hour. Like what happened? Oh my God. (laughs) But yeah, we've been keeping each other entertained. Do you guys have a uh, Discord server or anything set up? They're talking about making one. I don't actually have Discord downloaded. I don't know a lot about it, but they, it has been mentioned to make one. I know that some of the other quarantine groups have them. And I know that many prefectures have them because Mm -hmm. of COVID. What kind of orientation are you going through? What did they give you? Generally, no specifics, but you know, how much did they give you? How much time does JET actually take up in your day? Orientation is spread out over 10 days. Um, not, we don't have anything scheduled for the weekend. They give you a schedule with everything you need to do for each day when you check in. It's mostly, you know, in, informational videos, different presentations people have done and just recorded. Mm. There are three live Zooms we have to do. 
um, each one's for different levels. So elementary school, junior high school, and senior high school, just a brief hour long how to teach type thing. And you're required to do all three. There's a couple little books we have to read, that kind of thing, but nothing super long. I'd say it probably takes two to three hours of my day each day is really okay. is not bad at all all right so that's pretty good I mean if you consider normally orientation is like 2.5 days and it's basically all day so they're kind of breaking up the normal mm-hmm. orientation and exactly. that's good that they actually have the like teaching demo that was the only practical thing I think that came from the real orientation like the live orientation so that's good all the other information very easily could have been handed to us in packets oh, yeah. like you're getting and yeah it's been really helpful the orientation the, the setup we have I'm very grateful for it do you have any prior teaching experience? I think that's something people are curious to know. Particularly in high school, I did like teacher cadet and mentor tutoring, mm. working with middle schoolers and elementary schoolers. But that's it. I didn't go to school for it. I've never taught an official class. Very interesting. Besides orientation stuff, does JET contact you guys at all during this time or not really? Not yet. In terms of your suitcases, what have they told you? Are you going to have to ship a big suitcase away in a few days? well so, a week <laughs> yeah so at the end of quarantine either I want to say the day before we leave or two days before we leave we ship our big suitcases mm-hmm. to our prefecture at our own cost so we have to yes. pay for it that's and normal then, mm-hmm. um, is there anyone in your group that you know is going to the same prefecture as you not to my same prefecture I know of a couple people that are going to close by prefecture okay so you might be on your own for I'm your idea. trip okay Well, that's too bad, but that'll make things easy and quick because you'll have some paperwork to do once you arrive in your prefecture too. Okay, is there anything else you'd like to tell us about the JET side or the quarantine side? um, Really, the only thing I'd like to say is that it is not as complicated as it seems when you first get here and you are so jet lagged and so tired and you just want to sleep and you're looking at all these papers and you're like, I'm never going to figure this out. It's not that bad. I had that moment I got here and I was, it was like 7 p.m. I was like, I haven't slept in 24 hours. I don't know what I'm looking at. I can't read English anymore. Um, But it's really, it's really This English looks like Japanese. What's happening? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. But it it wasn't bad at all. Nice. And do you have any advice for the quarantine like what to fill your time with or snacks or anything for Um, quarantine I would definitely I would definitely recommend bringing some snacks just in case you don't like the food they give you um because you you don't get much option between you get normal meal or vegan meal pretty much Mm -hmm. um so just in case you know I have heard a few complaints either people don't like the yogurt they give at breakfast or they're not sure about one thing in the dinner or something like that. So snacks help. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say bring some entertainment that does not require the Wi-Fi in case it does get bogged down with everyone doing orientation. I downloaded some books on my tablet. Um, my friend brought her painting supplies, which I don't know wow. how she fit that in her suitcase, <laughs> but good for her. She's been painting watercolors, um, just something like that. So far, so good. I mean, I'm only on day four. I haven't gone truly stir crazy yet. (laughs) Some people have been doing yoga. Jed actually um, provides a link to daily calisthenic. Calisthenic. Oh, yeah. I can't say that word. (laughs) But (laughs) some links to that that they recommend doing just so you don't atrophy in your room. Yeah, right. Don't get a blood clot, okay? Your insurance hasn't started yet, no. It has, exactly. but still. <laughs> okay, that's about all the time we have. So thank you so much. I hope this answers some of my viewers' questions because I know I got some questions about quarantine since I've talked a little bit about JET during coronavirus. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I wish you luck in your new prefecture and thank on you. your new career. Um, thank you so much. And thanks for doing the interview with us. Uh, To my viewers, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the description. I will try to relay them through my guest here today. And keep Keep dreaming, dreaming, dreamers. dreamers.